The next subject that we're going to cover is dynamic NAT. Now, dynamic NAT is still a one-to-one -one mapping like static NAT, but it maps private IP addresses to a pool of public IPs. If there are more private IPs than public IPs, then no more translations will occur until the translation times out. Also, the Cisco documentation states, the main difference between dynamic NAT and static NAT is that static NAT allows a remote host to initiate a connection to a translated host if an access list exists that allows it while dynamic NAT does not. So what that means is that if we have a group of servers in our DMZ that need to be accessed from hosts on the internet, we shouldn't be using dynamic NAT. Okay, so let's have a look at our topology. So I will be doing an inside dynamic NAT to the DMZ interface, and then we'll add some extra loopbacks on the DMZ, and we'll be going from our DMZ to the outside, and we'll see that if there's more private IP addresses than in the pool, that the translation doesn't occur. So I have my inside CLI and DMZ devices already open. If I go to my inside first, let me see if I'm able to ping the DMZ interface from the loopback. So if I said ping 10.1.1.2 from the source of 30.1.1.1, that is reachable. Also, if I jump onto the CLI and see show X late, we can see that there's no NAT at the moment. So I have to do the configuration on the CLI firewall. And the way that I'm going to do this, the first thing I'm going to do is make an object. So I'll say object network. I'll just say inside NAT to DMZ. This subnet is going to be 30.1.1.0. We'll just say it's a slash 20. A slash 30 will be fine. So if I say 252, and that should be it. It would only be two hosts. And then I need to do a pool of IP addresses. So if I now say an object network again, I'm um, sorry, object network, just say NAT pool. And we do a range of addresses and there's only two. So it will translate to 10.1.1.50 to 10.1.1.51. It should only be able to use those two addresses. All right, um, and then we have to actually apply the NAT. So if I say NAT from, um, sorry, parentheses, from inside to DMZ, we're going to say the source is going to be dynamic NAT, and it's going from our inside NAT DMZ to our NAT pool. That should be it. Right, now if I jump back on our inside router and see if we could ping again, we should be able to ping, but it should actually show that it's being translated. So we see that we've pinged and when we look at our translation, we should either see that it's being translated into 10.1.1.50 or 10.1.1.51, only those two addresses. So if I now say show, X late. Yeah, we can see that our inside source of 30.1.1.1 has been translated going to the DMZ to 10.1.1.51. So that's excellent. Let's do that same thing on our ASDM. And I will also show you that um, if we don't have enough IP addresses, public IP addresses, even though it's not public IP address 10.1.1.50, but if I show you on the ASDM, if we don't have enough public IP addresses, that the last NAT translation will be dropped. And to do that, I need to open up the ASDM and also our outside interface. So let me do that. Outside is the one. All right, when I jump onto the DMZ, I should be able to ping, let's just ping any of the loopbacks, 143.12.0.1. Let's ping it from Let's have a look at what loopbacks we've got here. Show IP interface brief. Let's ping 143.12.0.1 from the source of 2.2.2.32. And we don't have reachability. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna add some more loopbacks and then give reachability to those. So the first thing I'm going to do is say interface loopback 30, give it an IP address of 2.2.2.30 on a slash 32, then I'm going to say interface loopback 31, up arrow, 
give it an IP address of 2.2.2.31. .2 .2 .2 oh, 31. And last one is interface loopback 33. I give it an IP address of 2.2.2.33. .2 .2 Okay, we can see that we've got our four loopbacks there. Also, what I need to do is advertise these into OSPF because we've done a, a mutual dis redistribution between OSPF and BGP. I don't think that we advertise this loopback into OSPF. This is the reason why the loopback couldn't reach the BGP loopbacks advertised on the outside. So let's just check that. Do show run section router OSPF. Yeah, it hasn't been advertised. So if I say router OSPF1 and network... 2.2.2.0.0.0.255 advertise that in area zero. Now what we should see is that we have reachability. So if I say do ping 143.12.0.1 from a source of 2.2.2.32. Yeah, we now see that we have reachability. Let me save that. So we have reachability across. Now we're going to do our dynamic NAT configuration on our ASDN. Now, if I open up our ASDN, okay, don't have it open at the moment. I accept the risk. Guys, I have a request from you. If you're enjoying the free content, I'm looking to increase my subscriber count to 4,000 subscribers by June. But I can only do that if you give me the play special. Do you want to know what the play special is? Press like and yeah, subscribe. Okay, back to the video. So I think that the first thing that we need to do, we go into this firewall tab and we need to set up our network objects first. So let's just say in access rules. I mean, there's probably a different way to do it, but this is the way I do it say add, then I click this source tab here. Let me say add again. And I just want a network object. So the first network object I'm going to call DMZ loop, just to reference the loopbacks. They're going to be under uh, the type of network. So we could say network here. It's going to have an IP address of 2.2.2 .2 .2 dot zero on a slash 24. I think that's okay for the first one. Then I want another one, which I will call the NAT pool. So again, let's go to add network object. I'm going to call it NAT pool. This now is going to be under a type of range. So we're going to select range here. And the start IP address is going to be 209 dot 12.8 and the end address is going to be 209.10.12.10 now you can see that this only covers three addresses but we have four loopbacks all right let's say okay and okay that now we should be able to reference those when we go to our nat rules so i will yeah i'll go straight to nat rules i won't apply them here see if i can still reference them let's go to nat rules we're going to add our nat rule then i'm going to say our source interface is DMZ. Our destination interface is outside. Our source address now. Now this is where I should be able to reference it. Yeah, we've got our DMZ loop. That's going to be, yeah, DMZ loopbacks. Any address, any service. Our NAT type, we use, we're doing dynamic NAT. And our source address should be our NAT pool. Always double click it and make sure it's populated here. Yeah, say okay. And we're going to make sure that the rule is enabled. I think that's it. Let's say OK. Let's apply that. So we've got an object of DMZ pool, object network of NAT pool, which is an range of addresses. Our source is dynamic and it's going from our DMZ loop, which is our loopbacks in DMZ, to our NAT pool. That's good. It's going to send that to the command line. Okay. Okay, let's now, I've got an ASDM open. That's only to show the translation. So first, let's see if we could do our ping. So we're pinging from the DMZ. First, what I will do is ping, let's ping 143.12.0.1 from a source of 2.2.2.30. If 
first one is art and that goes through. Now, if I go into the ASDN and I say show x late, we can see that this 2.2.2.30 has been translated to 209.10.12.8, which is what we expect. So if I go back onto the DMZ, I do this ping again, but I change our source now to 31. It goes through, or it will do. And then we ping the next one, which is 32. That also goes through. Now, if we go onto our ASDM and we do our show x -lay, we can see that we've used 10, 9 and 8, which is our complete pool. So I'm expecting that the last one has no IP addresses and it should fail. The ping should not go through. So if we ping from 33, and this is going to fail because our pool of addresses have been used up. And the only way this ping will actually be able to go through is if when those translations time out. So that's it for Dynamic NAT. It's a one-to-one -one mapping, uses a pool of addresses, it maps private IP addresses to public addresses. So from your inside to your DMZ or your inside to outside, or from basically from a higher security level to a lower security level. I will see you guys in the next video.